Hey, so you're curious about what it's like to live in Colorado Springs. I'm giving you the good, the bad, and the ugly, and we're getting into it next. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Mark Davis here with the Colorado Springs Life. Now I'm a realtor living right here in Colorado Springs, Colorado. And if you wanna know everything there is to know about living in Colorado Springs, you've come to the right place. So start by subscribing to the channel, hit that bell notification button so you never miss out when we drop a new video. I also wanna take a moment to give a big shout out to everybody who's reached out and I'm currently helping relocate here to the Springs. And if you're thinking about moving your family to Colorado Springs or any of the surrounding areas, give us a call. We get contacted by clients all over the country and we absolutely love it. So reach out, give us a shout, shoot us a text, send us a DM, Whatever works best for you, we got your back when moving to the Springs. Okay, so you're doing your research, you're in front of your computer screen, maybe you're comparing Colorado to a few other states, and you're wondering what it's truly like to live in Colorado, what it's truly like to live in Colorado Springs. Well, I've got the top pros and cons of living in the Springs from the good, the bad, and the ugly. So without further ado, let's get started. Homelessness. There is a large homeless population here in Colorado Springs. I mean, I read a news article recently that reported that the number of people experience, experiencing homelessness in Colorado Springs was about 1,156 people counted in this year's point in time survey. When my wife and I moved here in 2014, we were expecting to see some homeless people, right? But if you live close to downtown, especially that's the case. I mean, there's just through major thoroughfares and intersections, even out east in the Powers Corridor, you drive by a homeless encampment um, when, whenever I get on I-25 with abandoned cars, drug down to the riverside, the creek side, and you know, underneath bridges. When I go on my runs in the morning, I, I mean, I'll run through downtown and, and there will just be like a, a tent city uh, down, down in Colorado Springs, downtown. So it's really crazy that there's so many people that are on the streets right now. My wife always tells me that she hands money and food to people that are panhandling, but has also influenced our decision a lot living in certain areas of the Springs, especially from a safety standpoint. Now, that being said, the infrastructure here, there's some room for improvement with infrastructure here. Roads, bridges, um, sidewalks, streets, roundabouts, ease of use. The city, it's like they designed the city, well, they designed the city 100 plus years ago, right? But like modern memory, the city, they put in roads and stuff like that, but it supported a populace of probably a quarter of a million people, 200,000 people. We're at a half a million people now, and in El Paso County, it's even more. So. I think they're doing a good job though of getting with the program and realizing, okay, we need to step our game up and do that. And I think they are. I think they're they're starting to really expand out. Like the Powers Corridor is like our crown jewel. That's gonna take you all the way to I-25 now, which is super exciting to see that. See a, a freeway system go through kind of a very prestigious neighborhood, <laughs> which I think is funny that people that bought that land that were overseeing a golf course are now like gonna be overseeing a freeway system. Of course, you know, I-25 going to Denver, I think they're almost done with that. Like I was, I was, I drove to Denver a couple weeks ago and man, that road, that freeway system, that road, I-25 is almost done. Don't quote me, but it looked pretty done to me. Like it was almost like done, done. And I remember that was chewed up and tore up for years, for the last three, four years. And I think back then they were talking about, oh, 2022, the road, it's gonna be done. And now it's here. So climate and weather. We have volatile weather here. We have hail, flash hail storms, flash wind storms, flash snow storms. Pretty much if you don't like the weather from one moment to the next, just wait five minutes and it'll change. I mean, when I first got here, the amount of hail that we were hit by since I've been here, I mean, there's probably been at least five really bad hailstorms. And I mean, I'm not just talking about some, you know, light pebbles falling from the sky. I'm talking about golf ball size hail shooting down from the sky, breaking people's windshields. I mean, I don't know what year it was. I think it was probably 2019, 18, 19. Uh, we had a hailstorm blow through and it literally destroyed 
the Fort Carson Army Base um, military fleet of vehicles. I mean, it looked like there had been somebody that drove by there and just destroyed the entire military base. Um, it just crazy amounts of wind too. From one minute to the next, you're gonna have wind blow through and you know knock down fences, knock down power lines. You're gonna get, um, just like a week ago, we had a crazy windstorm that uprooted a bunch of trees. Uh, you know, we were driving down, I think it was downtown and um, uh, like in the old North End part of town. And we had trees that were like leaning like this, about to fall on someone's house. So, I mean, wind is a, is a real crazy thing here. The next thing about uh, Colorado Springs weather is it's very dry here. Um, so, you know, you have um, so much dry air that it's very thin here as well. So you have dry, cold, thin air. And so if you don't believe me, if you think I'm you know, being dramatic or, or whatnot, I mean, try to run, run in the morning, run at 7 a.m. Uh, in the winter time, you know, run a mile, run two miles, and you're gonna have just, you're gonna, it's gonna be tough to breathe. Um, you know, you're gonna have so much cold air in your lungs, freezing your lungs, it's thin, it's hard to catch your breath a lot of the time. But, the, but on the flip token of that, if you are in shape and you do like running uh, or just working out in general, being in shape here in Colorado, a mile high above sea level, really puts you at the very top in terms of being in the best shape across the country. So that's why the US Olympic Training Center is here. People that are in shape here that like the outdoors and like being fit and active, uh, you really can be in the best shape of your life if you're training here in Colorado Springs. This is kind of a crazy one. It's sort of a funny one to me. I mean, it's not not to sound overly dramatic, but um, there's a lot of static electricity in the air here too. Um, you know, every practically anything that you touch this metal, you know, you're going to be shocked. And it's almost like you know when you're growing up, your parents tell you don't drag your feet, you know, because you're going to be shocking everybody. It's like that here, but without you dragging your feet. Just getting in your car, putting the the, the key into your into your uh, your door or ignition, shock. Um, touching anything that's metal, at least for me in my office, you're gonna get zapped, shocked with electricity. You know, just this morning I was getting into my gear locker, getting ready for the day, and I put my key into the into the lock, turned it, and I saw a little bit of electricity bolt shooting out of the key. And so it's just really weird. Like you hate to sound like a baby because you're getting shocked all the time, but you, know, you touch, you know, like you reach out to somebody, shake their hand, you're gonna get a shock. Um, and I think that just has to do with the, the air here being really thin, being a mile high above sea level, where you know we're, we're, our altitude is different here. Um, and there's not a lot of humidity to maybe dampen that. And then the air is thin, so maybe it's just charged with electricity or something. It's kind of weird, but I noticed that a lot. And you'll notice that when you get here too. I did this in a different video. I was talking about this topic, which is learn to layer. You know, you wear a nice breathable, thin, uh, what do they call it? Um, base layer. In general, when we talk about layering, we're looking at a base layer, which is your first layer, a uh, mid layer, or um, like a fleece, something like what I'm wearing right now, and then an insulating layer, which is going to help like trapping your body temperature. On top of that, you also have your outer layer, your hard shell, which is going to keep you dry. The point of that outer layer is to protect you from the elements. Another thing about yeah. Colorado Springs, we talked about climate, we talked about wind, we talked about hail, we talked about snow, we talked about um, altitude sickness. But here's one that's really yeah. kind of funny. and. Anybody that knows me will tell you that I'm kind of a super nerd <laughs> with a lot of things. And one of those things happens to be landscaping, landscaping. I'm in real estate, so I drive around a lot. I'm in a lot of neighborhoods, I'm in a lot of communities, and I see a lot of landscaping. Colorado Springs landscaping doesn't do very well here. Let me explain. You're coming from a place where everyone mows their lawn, their lawn, is manicured, you got your front yard lawn and your backyard lawn and it's nice and green. To keep your lawn looking like that here in Colorado Springs, you gotta be a professor. You gotta be somebody that's like scientific about it. You gotta put in the time and the work. It takes a lot of work to maintain a lawn here. It can be done and they're out there, but if you're the kind of guy that skips a weekend and doesn't like to stay home, likes to travel, whoo, you come back to the springs, your lawn might be look, you got the HOA, they call the HOA on you. So I recommend going with a Xeriscape, Xeriscaped landscaping situation where you got hardscapes like rocks, mulch, 
some driftwood and the type of plants that can survive on a drip line and that can survive in harsh climates like ours here in Colorado Springs. Any of my clients, past clients that have uh, subscribed to this channel, <laughs> leave a comment below and tell me when the first time you heard me talk about Starbucks grass. And that'll be, um, <laughs> that'll be too funny. All right, everybody, that is going to about wrap up this video. I hope that you've enjoyed this and found some value from it. Now, if you wanna check out more about what Colorado Springs has to offer, or see what type of gear that I use when I shoot these videos, I've placed a ton of links down below in the description as a resource for you. Also, before you leave, do me a huge favor, like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification button so you never miss out, and as always, my friends, stay creative. Mark out.